so my name is Pablo. Um, I work at Data Clinic, Data Clinic Two Sigma. Um, so for anyone that doesn't know, Two Sigma is a financial sciences company. Um, we usually have we have a lot of software engineers that like solving large uh, large scale data problems. Um, but in that spirit, we just realized that there were many more problems that could be solved outside of the financial realm. And so a bunch of employees got together and decided, like, hey, we should probably start something to be able to give back to the community. And eight years, nine, no, ten years ago at this point, they formed Data Clinic, um, akin to a legal clinic where lawyers could give back their time to be able to work with nonprofits. Um, over here, the software engineers and data scientists at Two Sigma give back their time to work with nonprofit organizations, governments, academic institutions, and so on. And so that's how Data Clinic was formed. So. Data Clinic is what started as just a volunteer resource team at Two Sigma is now a fully staffed team. Um, I'm a full-time employee at Data Clinic. We have Kyle Shug over here at the front, who will be giving a talk later. Also a full-time employee at Data Clinic. Um, we are there, essentially the pro bono um, tech for good arm of Two Sigma. So we partner with nonprofits um, a lot with I uh, work a lot with open data. Um, a lot of the nonprofits we work with are typically working on problems that require open data sets to be able to solve their problems. Um, so in the past, um, basically as data player, we love um, open data week. We love open data. We've given many talks here always uh, looking for different open data sets to be able to build different things about. Um, and right now, 2024, this year is actually the one we've done the most. This time we have three different talks, this being one of them. Um, so yeah, we do a whole lot of stuff with, with open data. It's like one of our favorite things to work with. Um, in the past, uh, we built an app called Neurohoods. It's the screenshot in the back, you can't see it very much, but that was an open source app around like being able to uh, map New York data and cluster it across different variables. Um, we've built Scout, which I'll be showing off today, which is what you all come for, which is a way to be able to explore New York's open data, but also the open data of, of over 100 different data portals across the US. Um, last year we built Trek. Trek is an open source um, tool to assess the risk level of uh, different um, public transit stops the risk level with regards to climate change, like flooding, um, yeah, flooding, rainfall, and so, and so on, particularly relevant, relevant today. Um, so uh, switching gears now, that's the general intro of like data clinic and what we do, but now on to like the open data portal. Um, I'm sure many of you have worked with the actual official New York open data portal before like we have. We love it. Um, over 10 years, it's accumulated like 3,493, or at this point, probably it's changed a little, data sets. They have data sets from 95 agencies. Over 10 million data sets ha have been downloaded. Uh, over 20 million page views. So for all intents and purposes, incredibly successful open data portal. So we have nothing but love for the New York City open data portal. Um, but in working with it with different organizations and having to search for the data sets that we wanted from the New York Open Data Portal, we did see a few um, areas of opportunity that we could, that we had here. So we found three main things. Um, and these are things that Scout is intended to solve, which we'll walk through once we get to the workshop portion. Um, data sets, first of all, have low visibility. Um, so it's very easy to find a data set when you know what you want to look for. Um, but then after that, there might be other potentially useful data sets that, um, that you might not find just because they have, haven't been downloaded much, they're not like top of the, of the rankings or anything like that. Um, or they might just be like weirdly named. They're not exactly matching the keyword that you searched for even though they might be very relevant to you. For example, you may have searched for car crashes, but the data set was called car accidents. Actually, it's the opposite. You may have searched for car accidents, but the data set was called car crashes. Um, Thank you. Then the next one is that it's hard to find connections between data sets because most, and this isn't just New York, but most open data portals are organized around agencies. Um, so you're searching for health data, you're searching for restaurant data, you're searching for transit data, and so on. But if you're trying to do a research project or build a product or something like that, usually a lot of these things have cross-cutting concerns. Um, so for example, if you might be looking for something around car crashes again, um, that might be something in like 
probably related to law enforcement or something like that. But like you might also once you find all the tra all the places where there's like traffic stops, you might be interested in finding um, where all the any potential like school crossings are, parks or anything like that that might be relevant to where there might be heavily congested areas. But all of these data sets are in completely different um, agencies, which makes it hard to find those connections. Um, and then the last thing is that there's no easy way to collect all of the data sets that you found and share it with other people. So this is just about curation, about like three months later, you get back to your project and you're like, oh man, where are those 10 data sets that I was working with? Uh, so for us with Scout, which you'll see is that we see this as like a recommendation problem. So think of Netflix or Amazon or anything like that. You like find what you want and then it tells you, hey, you might be interested in these other things. So kind of that's what the approach we took with Scout. You search for something. Um, it surfaces the data sets that might be relevant to what you wanted. You click on one, but then it tells you, hey, these other data sets are relevant to it. Um, and what I think is the next slide. Yeah. And the way that we determine, hey, these data sets might be relevant to you is we look at the potential that they have to join with other data sets. So we'll be showing you that. So like this data set matches these column headers with this other data set, which means you'll be able to join them when you're using R or Python or whatever. Like, that's always good to know that, like, okay, these data, these columns and IDs, they match. Um, we assess thematic similarity, and we'll cover that in more detail later. So basically, we're looking at two different data sets that may not match in keywords or description or whatever, but using like machine learning algorithms that please don't ask me about, Kausha can explain them, because I don't understand the machine learning part. Um, they basically tell you if two data sets are thematically similar. So you can actually, um, because like all the data sets have a description, they're, they have that metadata, so we can determine that. And then we also recommend data sets based off of like, basically if they're part of like a collection that you stored. And we will look at all of those things together. So five years ago, when we built the very first version of this, it started as New York City. At this point, we've expanded it to many more open data portals. And so we will be looking at examples of how to look at open data across different portals. Um, so right now, Scout has data from 129 open data portals. It has over 120,000 data sets in it. Um, we've analyzed 13 million columns of data. So all of this is going to be at your fingertips to be able to search for. And there's going to be a lot of open data portals across federal, state, um, and city level. <coughs> and it, this is a question we always get. So just ahead of time, how we get all this data, um, we use a Socrata API. So truth be told, Socrata is not open source, unfortunately. It is free to use, so everyone here can use it. Uh, but just, you know, it's a proprietary API, but they've put in all of the work of already connecting to all of the open data portals across the US. So we just connect to Socrata's open data API. We pull all of its hundreds of thousands of metadata data sets, and we analyze it, them for joinability and thematic similarity. And that's how it all makes it there. Um, which means there is potential to be able to expand to other, to other um, APIs, but currently it's just Socrata. Um, and also, the news feature we have is that now you can also view the data directly in Scout, which we will be working through as well. So it's not just looking at metadata, um, but you can also like get some basic, just basic descriptive analytics. Um, just for context, you can also do this in the New York Open Data Portal as well. Um, but just say like, you know, there's there's options. Um, all right, so this is at workshop instead. But all right, we're gonna work through um, Scout together and explore how to do all of these things. So anybody who has their computer with them, um, you're going to want to go to scout.tsdataclinic.com. So, yes, David. So if anyone can see the URL there, I know it's not very big. Actually, let me just rewrite it here. All right, then people just give me a thumbs up once you've, you've got in. All right, so once you're in, first thing you're going to see is this portal. It probably won't show you the exact same um, data sets that you're seeing, that I'm seeing here, um, just because I'm running mine locally, um, just so it can run a bit faster since demoing. But um, we all have the same data sets. It's all the New York data sets. They just might not be in the same order. So for... Um, for this workshop, I'm going to, through an going to go through an example of like, say you're trying to research um, taxi usage in New York. 
and trying to research it according to locations, boroughs, and then later trying to see if there's any correlation between taxi usage and, let's say, car accidents, for example. This is just an example, not something I've actually researched. And importantly, this is a workshop on data discovery. We're not going to actually do analysis. Because again, that's not my specialty. We have Kaushik for that. He is our data scientist. I guess since I didn't explain it for context, I'm a full stack engineer. So my job is to build the front end and back end. Um, all right, so once everyone's in there, let's, if you see at the front over here something that says like 2021 green taxi data, you can click on that. But otherwise, I would recommend just up here typing taxi. And let's see all the relevant taxi data sets there are. And I'm going to scroll through just for the demo. Let's say, where is it? It's 20. Here we go, 2021 green taxi trip data. So let's click into that one. And once you go in there, all right, we're in the data set page. On the left, you see a bunch of metadata about it, its title, the description. This is all comes from the New York Open Data Portal. And then over here, we're looking at you know, the potential join columns. So this is a page where also, as you're using this, this is still very much in beta. You will find some bugs. That is something that I'm going to, part of this workshop is also we're going to leave time, uh, it's not like 20 minutes at the end for us to actually have a discussion around feedback because this is under active development. So anything while you're using this that you're like, oh, this didn't work, or I wish it could do this, um, tell me. Like a part of this workshop is for me to list those things so that you can all decide the roadmap for the next year so that then I can build that because this is my job. Um, all right, so we're at potential join columns. So this basically takes all the headers of this data set and searches for it across the open data portal to find other data sets that might have the same headers. So for example, we have this one called DO location ID. That stands for drop off location ID. If you were to expand that, it then looks at all other data sets that have that exact same header. Um, one thing that has been requested is that maybe don't match for the exact header, maybe also see who has similar headers. So that is something for us to, to add. But right now, it's just checking who else has this exact same header, DO location ID, drop off location ID. Um, and it tells you how many IDs match. So what we do is we take a sampling of all the values in this data set. We take a sampling of all the values in all the other data sets. And we see how many IDs are matching. So that just gives you a general idea of how joinable these data sets are. So for example, if one of these said like 1% IDs match, that tells you, OK, we have the same header. That's great. But only 1% of the values are matching. So they're probably not actually like collecting data from the same place or the same borough or something like that. In this case, as expected, all, all the IDs are matching. Um, you might see some that say 99%. But again, that's just because we're doing a sampling. So sometimes it's not going to be perfect. Um, so. Uh, we're like, OK, this is a very joinable data set with a lot of things. This is really good. Um, over here on the left, let's click Add to Collections. This is the part I told you about curation. So create your first collection. Um, let's call this School of Data, um, Taxi Data. Then create and add data set. And it should say on the top right, Created Collection. That's great. Um, all right, so over here, what was I looking for? Let's see, where is it? And so yes, I'm seeing I wish I sorted this. All right. But yeah, so 2021 yellow taxi trip data. This is very relevant. You can always expand that and see which IDs are actually matching, which are the most common ones. Since these are IDs, it's not particularly interesting to look at the ID numbers. But if this were like boroughs or zip codes or something like that, this is just a quick way to be like, oh, which are the most common matches? Um, but over here, I'm focusing on 2021 yellow trip data, yellow taxi trip data. It might be on the second page if you don't see it on the first. Um, but let's click View. So again, this is like we told you, like the Netflix style thing. So like we started one data set, and then immediately it could, we jumped to another one from there, because we saw that it has a joinable data set. And we're choosing this one just because let's stick to the same year, 2021. So again, you go here. We jump to yellow taxi trip data. Who knows the difference between green taxis and yellow taxis here? All right, great. Does, who wants to explain? Uh, green taxis are for uh, other boroughs, so like outside of Manhattan? Yes. Um, and so that's why, you know, if we're trying to look at taxi data, we're like trying to get both of those. Because if we want a complete picture of taxi yeah. fares in, in New York, we're going to want to get both green and yellow. 
Um, all right, so now we're at the yellow taxi trip data. Again, all these columns, but we already explored joinability, so we're going to just keep that here. But you know, we also want the yellow taxi trip data. So on the left, add to collection. Let's just add it. Let's just put there school of data. So we just added it there. Now, if at any point you want to refer back to that, on the left, you can click on collections. It won't change your page. We have the school of data collection, and you'll see all the data sets we've added there. So this is like is aggregating. And I know at some point you might wonder, like, oh, wait, but I never logged in or anything. That's totally fine. It's like stored in your browser. So you can close this, and, and it'll still be there. And it's totally fine. If you wanted your collections to store across different computers, um, we do let you actually create an account. You can always go to sign in, create an account, and then it'll be these data collections will be linked to your account. Um, one thing that's important to us at Data Clinic is we never want to lock people in in that way. So all of our products are always allowed to use without creating an account. But if you do want that transportability, you can go ahead and, and create one. Um, all right, so we're at yellow taxi trip data. This is great. Um, but one thing is that we looked at the drop-off location IDs earlier, right? We were talking about that. Let's look at Visualize, for example. Um, on Visualize, you can get a quick summary view of things over here in this tab. And let's scroll over here, which says drop-off location ID. So this is... So the taxis aren't, don't record like the exact coordinates of where you pick them up or anything like that. They instead record things according to the ID of the location. And like taxi zones have different IDs. But just by reading this, you're like, I have no idea what's in Manhattan, what's in Borough, what zip codes, what neighborhoods these are. right? So no clue. So it would be nice if there was some way to be able to see that. So one thing that you might wonder is like, OK, maybe someone else has already done this before. So we have this tab called Resources, um, which oh, you can log in with GitHub. Oh, man. All right. If you are. All right, so you can always go to resources. If you log in with GitHub, it will basically search for GitHub with you to find any code commits that have used this data set before. I'm at green trip data. Hold on, let me switch back to yellow. OK, so over here, you can find all examples of where it was used. And you can always see how it was used, for example. Um, you can open the repository. It'll link you straight to the GitHub repository. You can see a description uh, if they have any visualizations there. Or you can click straight on the file. Let's see if these are a lot of, um, wow, yeah. I have no idea which one you click on here. Let's just choose any of this. All right, Python, public policy. You can click on that, and you can actually see the file where the where this was used. Um, so right now, for this one, this is just to show off the resources thing. This is just a way, if you find anything that has a descriptive readme or something like that, or for example, oh, this is the one. This is what I want to show, show you. Um, data set visualization, you can actually look at their readme and be like, oh, this person actually already created some pretty cool dashboards using the taxi data. Um, so you can actually now dig into their repo and see how that's working, like, or how they've processed it. They have like this taxi metadata.csv where they've downloaded some. They have a pipeline, so they've probably already done a lot of data processing. So you can just use this to be able to see, like, OK, here are some good examples of how I can work with taxi data, or what are the like um, intricacies of working with it, what are the edge cases, or things like that. So that's one way you can try and explore what some of these things are. Um, but another way is if you, hold on, I have a lot of Zoom pop ups over here coming up. All right. Another thing, though, is if you had worked with taxi data before, which I don't blame any of you if you haven't, is that you know that those um, location IDs are referred to as taxi zones. So we can always try and find them. And so if you go to thematically similar now, um, and you were to read any of these descriptions, you'll see that the word taxi zones is referred to a lot. And like all of these in the descriptions, they say like the location ID corresponds to the New York City taxi zones open data set. Um, and eventually, if you scroll like further down, you'll see a data set actually called New York City taxi zones. So this is also, I'll get ahead of all of you, it would be nice to have a search bar at the very top. So we could have just actually searched New York City taxi zones and filtered it. Um, while I was putting this workshop together, I was like, man, I should have really built that. So that is going to be top of the, of the priorities to do that after this. Um, so we're over here in New York City Taxi Zones. Let's click on that. All right, New York City Taxi Zones. There we go. All right. So if you're in New York City Taxi Zones and you click on Potential Join Columns, 
you're going to see it says we currently don't have the ability to analyze this data set. So this is something that you will find sometimes in Scout. That doesn't mean anything is broken. Um, that means that this is actually technically not a data set. If you were to click on view on open data now, you'll see that the link is not actually a data set. Um, it'll eventually load, but it's actually a map. So yeah, we don't have an ability to analyze this because it's actually a dashboard. So that would be why. But that's why we do have that um, link to always view anything on open data. So if you ever see anything that says we can't analyze it, it's probably because it's a dashboard. Just click on view on open data, and you'll see it. And the beautiful things of the New York City open data portal is that then they let you export that data. So we're at this dashboard. You can always click on export, and then you can download the original data set. Um, so this is how you can get now for all of these those location IDs. These are all the taxi location IDs. So when you do your analysis of taxi fares, you can always you can now add that. So let's add this to our collection as well. So there we go. So now we have three collections there. We have our green and yellow taxi trip data and the New York City taxi zones. Um, all right. What was next after that? All right. So. We have a good data set there. Let's say we want to go to my collections. So over here where it said collections. Um, or you can just click on the school of data collections right away. And you can refer back to it. So at this point, you have all of that. Um, again, we don't have an ability to download directly from here. And that is intentional because we're not trying to compete with New York City Open Data. So always, when you want to download it, actually go to view on open data and download it from there. Um, but here you can refer back to this anytime you want. If you have any coworkers or anyone that you're working with that you want to share this with, um, or say you're a data journalist and in your article you want to refer back, to, you want to point people in this direction, you can always go here and press copy link, and then you can share that. Like this is a completely shareable link. So I just did that, and it, you can send it to anyone, and it'll load this collection for them as well, and they'll be able to see those data sets as well. So. Right now, all we've done is looked kind of like thematically in the same region. We've just looked at taxi data and have been able to like find more joinable data sets. Um, but let's see where else we can get. So what I said earlier, let's say, for example, we want to see if there was any correlation between tax where areas with high taxi usage and with accidents. Um, and obviously, if you were an actual data scientist and doing this, you then might want to um, uh, adjust for like population or something like that, just to adjust for like, oh yeah, if there's more cars, there's probably going to be more accidents. But well, again, we're not going to get into that. This is just data discovery. So let's go back to the main explore page and let's search for accidents. So when you see this, you'll see that in one of the top three, I hope, <laughs> um, uh, results, you get something called motor vehicle collisions dash crashes. So importantly, this is one of the things of Scout is that we don't do exact keyword searches. We're trying to search things according to thematic similarity. So that's how you can still get, even though this doesn't say accidents anywhere in its um, description or title, this will still come up. So we can click on motor vehicle collisions. Um, actually, let's go back. Before we do that, one other thing. Let's say if, as part of our analysis, we were also like, we want to make sure that this can also be mapped, that we can actually plot this on a map, because let's say we want to do any kind of cool geospatial analysis. Uh, one of the most common filters used here, if you go to the left, click on filters, expand it by columns, and you can filter by latitude and longitude. So those are good ones to always, if you want anything to be mappable, these are the best columns to always filter by, because it's basically saying, now only show me columns that have a latitude and longitude column. Only show me data sets that have a latitude and longitude column, because that means those are likely columns that are going to have coordinates. So you can actually plot them on a map. So we do that, and now we see only five data sets that matched with the word accidents that have a lat long um, column. So let's click into motor vehicle collisions. So now we know that it has that this is going to be mappable. It has a lot of joinable data sets. You know, we're not going to go through all of that again, but let's just go straight to visualize this time. And this is going to be a bit slower because this is a very big data set because it has like the last 10 years of crashes in New York. All right, so we've loaded these things. This is actually fascinating. We have so much data about this. Um, you can. Uh, 
switch from table to the bar chart view if you just want a general descriptive analytic view of this. Let's say by borough. Um, I thought Manhattan was going to be the one of the most crashes, but turned out it was dead wrong. That one's like second to last. But you can always see which are the boroughs with the most accidents. Um, and if you wanted it to be mappable, just click on map. Um, give this one a little bit of time. And there are a whole lot of dots. Um, right now, there is a lot to expand here. So if anyone has ideas on how to make this map more usable when we get to the feedback session, definitely. Because there are so many filters and options we can add here. But I definitely want to hear from users as to what will be most useful for them when they're using this. Um, but yeah, you can always look at all these things. So this is a very quick way to just see this. One of the very cool ones is if you searched on the Open Data Portal, you search for the, the trees data set, you can actually see dots of where every tree in New York is. And that's, that's actually pretty fun. Um, not going to do it now because it's a huge data set and probably would take a while to load. Um, all right. What's that? We limit how many. Oh, yeah. We limit how many to not crash your browser. We, do, we, we don't load. If it's a data set that's way too big, we don't load the entirety of the data set. Um, all right. But, so we looked at this. We're like, OK, it is mappable. It has all the things we need. Um, it actually has coordinates. So even though this doesn't have the taxi zone IDs, it has coordinates, which means you can use like um, whatever fancy geospatial libraries you use in Python or in R to be able to see if this um, car crash happened in like one of the necessary the pick up or drop off locations. Um, so we like this data set, and so let's add it. So again, scroll on the left side, and we add it to the school of data collection. So. That's great. And so now the last thing of all is like, all right, we have a lot of very cool data. Let's go back over here. We have a lot of very cool data around New York City. So now the last thing is the whole point of Scout is that we're also letting you explore data from all data portals, not just, not just New York. So if you go back to Explorer, you may have noticed at some point that we had on the top right this toggle, especially when you were looking at thematic similarity. You know, we have this toggle over here. If you were to click on that toggle, you'll see it'll switch from just saying selected portal <coughs> to being a global search, to saying all portals. So this way, you can search for just accidents, and it'll search for all 120 data portals for anything that matches with accidents. Um, and so that is a good way if you like are just, instead of trying to search for taxi usage just in New York, but you want it across the whole country, you can always search it for that way. Right now, just to keep our queries from being way too big, Let's specifically choose Chicago. So I select the Chicago there, and then you can search taxi over here as well. And Chicago also has some pretty good taxi data sets. Um, I'll split up by years. So where is their 2021? Taxi trips 2022. There we go. So Chicago has taxi trips 2021. And we can look at this um, and then try and see if there's anything here in these columns that might match with what we had before. Um, so they actually have latitude and longitude. That's pretty cool. So that means this is going to be mappable. Um, and what else they have? They have trip seconds, and they should have oh trip miles. They also have like how uh, the distance of this, the distance of this cab ride. So for example, if we go back to school, our school of data collection, and we're like, oh okay, I wonder if the other trip data that we had has that as well. Um, and you'll see that it does. It has trip distance as well. And if you wanted to see some of them, so the trip distance is in miles. But you can always look at visualize. Oh my god, why is it open? And you'll be able to see trip distance over here on the yellow ta yellow taxi trip data. And let's go back to the Chicago data set. Try to add to my collection, and let's visualize that on the table as well. OK, this was entirely load. Does Chicago take more taxi rides than us? It's like, this is taking longer Probably. to look. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, the slower server. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, and they have trip miles. So this is like one of the limitations. Like they, The data sets didn't have the exact same column header, so Scout wasn't surfacing right away that they were joinable. So that is something for us to, to work on. Um, but by using the Visualize tab, you could actually look at them right here without having to download the data sets and be like, OK, these two have a similar column. So uh, we can probably find now, instead of, of 
looking at location correlation between accidents and location, maybe we can see a correlation between trip distance and, and accidents or anything like that. So this was something that we added to our school of data collection. We can save that here and again, copy that link. Um, and the link is now, because there's new data sets, it's now updated. So you can copy. It's going to be a different link from the previous one. So you can copy that and send it to someone, and they'll get all of this data, as well, all of these data sets as well. Um, so that is basically the overview of all of the key um, Scout features, where you have the ability to search for different data portals. You can do a global search across all data portals. Um, all the data portals we have integrated, it's not every open data portal in the US, just the ones that are in the Socrata API. Um, and then the key ways of jumping around is by looking at joinability of data sets and thematic similarity. And then if you connect to GitHub, you can always see um, any other repos or any other analyses that may have used this data set before. And also some descriptive statistics by looking at the visualized tab. Um, so I'm going to pause there um, because now for the rest, what we definitely know is that every year um, as a result of the School of Data workshop, we think of what the roadmap for the next year should be. So for example, in the past years, what came out of this was like the uh, ability to be able to have uh, the visualized column or to have the GitHub resources page. Um, those were things that have come up from in the past. Um, so I would really want to open it here, hear people's feedback, hear pe any quest either questions, feedback, or suggestions. Um, and embarrassingly, I know they're out there, but like any bugs you may have found um, because this is what I want to work on for for all of you. So thank you all for, for your time and for working through this. Yeah, definitely. Good luck to hear. Uh, yeah, uh, bye. Hi. Um, I was wondering if it might be possible for like <clears throat> Matthew create a collection to like share it with others or to like find other collections people have made. I feel like that'd be really valuable to like if someone's already done the effort of curating. OK, so hold on. Let's just add a. All right, totally forgot to go to these slides, but I'll answer your question first and then come to those last ones. All right, let me do this. OK, feedback. All right, so what was the, what would you say if there was any possible of doing what? Right away to like share your collections you've made with other people so they can discover themselves and like use it. Um, wait, so sharing the collections like in a different way than how we're sharing right now, or? So like, is there like a place to discover like full collections? Like discovering collections. That oh, discovering collections. So not yeah, just like sharing collections. already like come to the FBI oh. here, found like a really good like, set of data sets like got together. Let me just share that as a whole so then someone can find that. Right, right, right. So just basically a way to explore like already like collections that have been made yeah. by other people. Without, like, oh, okay. Like one level up. Right, right. That makes sense. Maybe make it uh, an option for the users to make their collection public. Public, yeah. I was thinking like yeah. collections. Yeah, we default to making all collections private, but you're right. Um, yeah, that's actually the first time we got this this suggestion. That's 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 a really good idea. And not that one's actually yeah, we can definitely do that one. It's not like we already have all the data necessary. We just have to add like a public versus private column and, and be able to do that. That's awesome. Good idea. Yes. Uh, I have a clarification question. Um, yeah. You said the thematically similar, uh, excuse me, data sets were based on the title and description, or like based on the data itself. But on, on the website, I think it says it's based on title and description. So. Yeah. Um, no. So the the joinability is based off of the column header and the data by seeing matching values. Mm -hmm. The thematic similarity is just on title and description. I see. Sorry if I misspoke earlier, but yeah. What is the Socrata API? So Socrata, um, at this point, they've, their, their name has, as a company has changed. But Socrata is a company that works with um, cities around the world to help them make their data public. Mm -hmm. um, so they don't just work in the US. Like, If you were to go to their website, they actually have APIs for Australian open data, European open data, Canadian, and so on, um, at which we actually eventually want to integrate all of the world's open data that's available through API. Um, but that's basically what they do. They have like a version of their API that you can pay for, which obviously has a lot more, is faster, has a lot more, less rate limits and such. But it is completely freely available. 
Um, you can create a key, you just create an account, you can create like an API key and you can use it. And so that's how you can get access to all of these open data portals. Um, and their API, the reason we work with it is their API is very standardized and very well documented. Mm -hmm. So that's why that was our choice of like, you know, it's it, it gets you access to hundreds of open data portals. It's like a wrapper for all Yeah, them. it's a wrapper, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like Socrata is a wrapper for open data portals, Scout is a wrapper for Socrata, which is a wrapper for open data portals. Um, what I have on this slide is that one of our things, like we already have the data pipeline set up, so it is uh, a goal that for us to eventually integrate other um, other APIs that are out there. There's like CCAN, there's Esri and stuff like that. So that is a that's like one one of our wish list things to be able to add beyond Socrata. about the column names. Uh, are these column names that uh, derive from the actual display names or the API column names? Because sometimes they might differ. Oh, OK. So column names, uh, column names are, so you're sh saying we're showing the display names. I'm not sure I'm not no. asking. But it looks like it, yeah. But API names sometimes differ from the column yeah. because column names can change over time. Based yeah. on uh, feedback from the users, but the API names tend to be uh, static because people need it for automation. For yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, well, uh, that's a good one. One thing I noticed also while working through this is that it would be nice if we also showed the column metadata, like the description of what each column is. Um, so if you're first, it's your first time working with this and you don't know the difference between DO location ID and PU, which is pickup location ID, it should be good. So include column descriptors. Challenges some of these. So I think we, we use the API column names for sure. Uh, the open data portal has like different files. So uh, you would have the data file, and then you would have the data dictionary file, uh, which is separate. I think we can extract the data dictionary as well from Socrata API. Yeah. Not. Last time I was working with their API, they include yeah. they include the column descriptors. And maybe that was like a newer update. but Because I know that we didn't have that when we first built Scout. Yeah. Really yeah. The last time I was working on this, is it like, it's, it's there. I'm like, oh, I should add that. Um, one important thing that you mentioned is that, you know, since this is open source, we have a GitHub page. Um, let's see, GitHub, Scout, Data Clinic. So if you always just go to github.com slash tsdataclinic, you'll find all of our open source repos. More specifically, you can always search for TS Data Clinic Scout, and you'll find that. Um, so with a Scout repo, it means, yeah, you can fork this. You can update it. Like, I respond to pull requests, and I like process those. Ignore the part that says 21 pull requests open. These are like ones made by bots. So when it's a human that does pull requests, I do review it, and I'm like, look at those. Um, but if you find bugs or you have more requests, please always come and add those here. Um, uh, we try and always be very responsive to those things. Um, and yeah, I definitely want to be able to like work on those and improve Scout as much as I can. So we still have some time here. So if there, is there any, oh yeah, yes please. Is there a filter for date range for the red data set was updated? Oh my God, that's great. There is not, but that seems like, I can't believe we missed I don't that. want some of those ancient data sets. Yeah. Yeah, oh my God, we don't have a filter for data set for date range. Oh, that is a great suggestion. Thank you. And a much and prefet. I'm gonna bold that one just because it's also like a very fast one, so I'll prioritize that. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm looking at the resources tab, and I'm curious um, how you pull the repos. Like, are they in any sort of order? That's really unclear to me. Um, there is no, it's just using the GitHub API. If there is an order that you think we could enforce, like then like just based off of star counts or something, then we're open to suggestions. Right now we're just putting it in the order that the GitHub API returns them in. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if it's like way more work, just like maybe filter the repos, like, oh, these are all done in Python, like, or that just even- Oh, like, add a language? Yeah, right? yeah, I think the API includes that. So yeah, for GitHub resources, add filters for language. Yeah, that's a good, uh, that's a good idea. I had it as like deduping that as well. Because I think right now we missed all the files in every repo, like every file in every repo with a mention. Okay. Uh, but I think it might just be easier to show the repo and so yeah. X number of files in the repo or something. Yeah. So yeah, no, we yeah, we list the commits and so yeah, yeah if somebody has 
edited the same file okay. in separate commits lots of times, then yeah, that will be shown. Yeah. Let's commits. But that might. All right, that's good. Um, if there's anything here you've suggested and like a month from now that's not implemented, you can always feel free to go to the GitHub on Scout and be like, hey, Pablo, like this. You said you'd do this. I think I found a bug on the potential. I'm so phones. sorry. <laughs> I just can't scroll. I can scroll all the way through Oh, no. I think I just introduced that. I was working on it this week. Wait, so if you go into the data system, oh my god, yeah. All right, so yeah, that is I just that is what we call a regression. So it's something that I just introduced that breaks something that was working. All right, um, data set trainability page is not scrollable right now. All right, thank you, and I am sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, I was not sure if you mentioned. I was curious how you kind of handle if like different agencies like having different like uh, I guess names for each other, or, like sit like the same like column like intent but like different names and like slightly different stuff. I'm not sure how you handle that. Yeah, that is the the eternal problem of of this stuff. Like that is one of our long term goals is to have a much better, smarter way of matching like those columns. Um, and we have a separate uh, like. A separate product that we've been working on um, called Smusher that will I hopefully present at the next <laughs> school of data, which is to help with that kind of like merging of data based off of like data sets fuzzily being similar in terms of uh, values or column headers. Um, right now, Scout is just depending on exact matches of the column headers that we're hoping to change in the coming year with like the new thing that we're building that we'll be able to like use in Scout as well. Um, has Scott like worked with I guess the week of MIC team at all? Like uh, they did like another session like this week, and like just one of the work they do is specifically around kind of like normalizing the data, uh -huh. like, kind of going in making common like uh, names for every agency and stuff. Cool. Maybe that could be something. Yeah. What was your name? Uh, we got MIC. We go. We go. MIC. So like you search like data book, so that'll most likely come up. Okay. And so it's right now they they have like twenty five data sets where. They kind of like just have a pipeline to adjust it and put it in that uh -huh. screen. All right, so this this one here you're saying we gov is this am I spelling this right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's awesome. No, we do not remember that 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 sounds like an excellent idea as well. Uh, the challenge is not just common names, uh, so specific values as well. So for example, borough, right? Uh, okay, there are different spellings for borough with the GH, with the P of the O R O. But then when you look at data sets, uh, some of them would list them as Manhattan, Bronx, Staten Island, Queens, uh, Brooklyn. Other ones would be MN, BX, SI. Um, another ones would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So even though it represents the same thing with similar column names, the actual data in it is not the same. And this is the same with like MPA data, if you work with any of them. There are four different representations of a station name across different data sets within the MTA. So we are trying to solve like both of those challenges simultaneously. Um, when yes, we want to identify different spellings of the column itself, but also uh, can we automatically detect that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is Manhattan, Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, Staten Island. Um, much bigger challenge on the second one. Yes. Do agencies ever express any interest in finding out how well their data sets match to other agencies' data sets? Have you? Um, we have, I mean, we, we developed this in sort of in coordination with OTI yeah. uh, back when they were called MODA. Uh, so we have presented this to several open data coordinators, uh, involved them in like focus groups and discussions while we were building it. Um, Data quality is something that's been top of list for a long time. Uh, it's just it's so hard to come up with a comprehensive measure of it. Um, but I like this idea of like how joinable their data is with other agencies' data, even if it's like priorities, like asking Department of Buildings, like which other sort of agencies' data do you care most about, and looking at how many of those you join, you're able to join it with. 
Uh, it's a great idea. Uh, it's your idea. I no, 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 just... <laughs> no, 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 no. But like, I had not thought of joinability as a part of data quality before. Mm. Uh, for me, it was more about like column names and consistency across data sets and, and stuff like that. But uh, maybe a rating or something. Just... Well, yeah. that might not be a good idea. <laughs> I'm going to add here for Kashi Kumaisi, but I'm going to add improve search result ranking. <laughs> so one of the things we find is that since our search results are based off of thematic similarity, um, we seem to have deprioritized just exact keyword matching. So sometimes you might search for something, but something that matches your exact keywords might actually be like ranked fifth or much lower, just because thematically we may have considered some other things higher priority. So that's just a bug in like, if there's an exact keyword match, we should still prioritize that. You might want to be able to sort by the size of the data set too. Oh. We don't have sorting at all, right? Do we have sorting? Um, no, because we use Elasticsearch, which makes sorting a bit more difficult, but it is definitely possible. But the other one, sort by last updated as well. Yeah, we're going to, yeah, that's going to be a thing to, to do. Well, it's different between filter and sort. Right, right. Yeah. So, like, Elasticsearch lets you filter, but sorting is a bit more difficult. Yeah, I was going to say, like, in relation to that, like, for sorting, like, is there a way to sort by percentage of ideas that match? Oh, on the joinability? Yeah. Sort by percent ideas that match. That's good. And data set joinability. All right. That's good as well. Um, oh, importantly, if anybody wants, my email is pablo.sarmiento at chewsigma.com. So if anybody thinks that they'll be using this more often or something like that and wants to be a user that, um, here, let me put this at the top, wants to be a user that provides more regular feedback, just email me um, so we can like keep in regular touch or like talk every month or two months or who knows. Just because having a user to provide feedback basically holds me and the team accountable. And with accountability, you actually get these feature updates. So um, that's definitely, please feel free to email me and be like, I am happy. Yes? I have you? a suggestion. Yeah. I don't know if it's there, but um, I'm new to the data field. So I feel like it will, have, it will be really great if there's like an introduction of how to use this. Scout, like, for instance, I didn't know that um, what do you call that? The taxi data where you drop off the mm -hmm. location to read the column. I do know that there is another dictionary file that you can refer to. Refer. Yeah. So it's there's like those um, yeah. All right. tips, I guess. Tutorials. No, that's good. All right. Thank you for that. So yeah, if anybody feel, at some point is like, okay, I definitely want to get feedback, email me, um, and then I'll find, um, we'll talk there and see what is a good regular cadence, but having feedback from users is like the best way to make sure that like things get built out. Because um, I like working on Scout. It's just, we always have other nonprofits that we work with. So making sure that there's a user that I'm accountable to will make sure that we actually make these regular updates happen. All right. Sorry, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, um, so I'm looking at like column name for matching data sets. Like, I think this is maybe like a user experience thing, but I'd like an option to just show all data sets instead of having the pre previous like one, two, next. OK. I and understand why that's there. Like, if there's like 100 matching data sets, that'd be like right. a pain to load. But I like the option to have like show all or something. Yeah, so let's see. Where did we? Maybe like pop it out or something. Yeah. All right, so this is again in like data set joinability. Option to show all data sets that are joinable. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that is just a front end. Thing. Like, absolutely, that can be added very easily. So that's a very good suggestion. Yep. Uh, two things. One small thing is just that when you search, it'd be good if, it'd be good if you could um, like clear the search afterwards and go back to the original page. Oh, OK. Yeah, right now you have to like just yeah. empty the backspace out the yeah. what you typed. So just the way it's changed. Yeah. And then I guess, like, I imagine this might be a little more difficult or something, but, like, um, I think some geographic data sets might have, like, um, if there's, like, a, 
like a list of like, or, or for example, if you're looking at like, um, like borough boundaries and stuff like that, like those data sets have like, uh, like a shape file, which would be like five different shapes. Oh, yeah. So in that case, like, I think there, it would sound like geographic data sets, <coughs> you could still display like, the sort of like list of entities, even if you're not, um, like, yeah. 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 No, that's that's absolutely true. Um, we actually have a GitHub issue that's open about that. So that one, I'll also bold because now this makes several times you've heard that one, and but that not terrible. Uh, the challenge with the spatial data is, I think Socrata doesn't return anything for those because it's like saved as like a shape file. Like it doesn't. I don't know if Socrata. No, it like I may have misunderstood, but like I've seen some data sets where like the actual Polygon itself, like it's stored, like the value is literally polygon parentheses and oh, the so list like of as coordinates as, as a string. Okay. As so you yeah, can yeah. actually okay. like process that and map it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the hard thing there is that right now we're trying, when you click on the map, um, the map visualization, we try and auto detect which are the columns that are mappable, which means that sometimes we miss that. So one thing that we want to add is have an actual drop down where like if we can't map it automatically for you to just tell um, tell Scout like these are the columns that are mappable. Because like one thing that you'll find is again the example of the taxi data, the Chicago taxi data, which uses actual coordinates, that one's not mappable. Um, because it actually has two different coordinates. It has the pickup coordinates and the drop-off coordinates. So our map will tell you that it's not mappable because we don't know which one to choose. Um, so we definitely want to add a drop-down that says, like, actually map these, map this, these coordinates. Yes? Is it possible to expose um, what the... So if it's not an exact match in the search, is it possible to expose, like, what? What was similar because uh, right now like the exact match is high, it's underlined right uh -huh. um but oh it's like <coughs> highlight what is it oh i don't think there's a way to do that no i think this is one of the like machine learning is a black box kind of problems uh, we use basically like uh, embeddings like word embeddings so we look for essentially similar like crashes is similar to accidents so essentially as long as there are words that are similar to the word that you searched for um but we do it at the level of the full title and full description. So we take all the words in your query and then look for all the words in the title and description and see which ones are closest. Uh, so it's a little bit harder to get that down to individual words that resulted in being similar or closer. Okay. Like it's doable, it's just uh, I think it might slow down the results a little bit. <laughs> Do you know how the embeddings work? Like map, I think it like turns everything into like a vector, and then it just does a dot product of the vector. So that's why it's hard to then turn from like a vector of numbers to a dot product to then be like these were the exact parts that were most similar. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, we're wrapping up. Everyone, thank you so much for your time. Actually, Kaushik, before we head out, Kaushik has a talk literally happening right now. Um, so if anybody would like to go it is uh well, what's the room number of yours 3302 i think okay so yeah it's at 3302 and it is a talk on navigating um flood resilience in new york city uh, which is again very relevant yeah all right yeah thanks everyone so much and great great feedback <laughs>